The first part of any blood test, the most vital part of any blood test is going to be the phlebotomy itself. It is really important to make sure that you have the right specimen, the right patient, etc. Otherwise, whatever results you get out won't matter. The most important part of any phlebotomy is going to be your patient identification. It is vital that we make sure that the patient I draw gets put in the right tube with the right label on that tube. If I end up drawing patient A and I label it patient B, I could potentially kill patient A and B in the process. So it's really important to make sure that the identification is correct. If you're dealing with an inpatient, they're gonna have a wristband and a wristband will have the patient information on it. If they are conscious, you can still ask them their identification information. Otherwise, always take. So I've got my order here and I'm gonna check and make sure that the name is correct. I'm going to go through the last name, the first name, and the medical record number. And in this case, I see the last name is Tation, T-A-T-I-O-N, they both match. Tim, T-I-M, they both match. Medical record number, 999979. This patient and this order go hand in hand. Now, if they're an outpatient, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to ask them their last name, make them spell it, their first name, make them spell it, and then give you the date of birth because they're not really gonna know their medical record numbers, but they will know their date of birth. Make sure that the patient you're drawing from is the patient you have the order from. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm in the phlebotomy chair and the phlebotomist is doing this and asking me, can you spell your name and pulling all their equipment together without even looking at what I am telling them. I could make up any name and they wouldn't know the difference. I could misspell my name and they wouldn't know the difference. I personally have had family members twice end up in a chair for the wrong patient because they didn't check the identification. Thankfully, before they did the draw, we realized there was a problem, but it's mandatory super important, very, very, very important that the phlebotomist is looking at the patient information when they're saying their name. So I'm gonna come in to my patient. While they're doing this, you can be doing your hand sanitizer. Could you please spell your last name for me? And I'm gonna be looking at my label while that patient is spelling their last name. Great, and what's your date of birth? Great, that's what I have here too, thank you. Make sure that you are looking at the orders when you are listening to the name. So I've got the correct patient. My hands are sanitized. I can now put my gloves on. And I'm gonna start looking for that vein. I'm gonna tie my tourniquet. When I'm tying the tourniquet, I take the band and I switch hands, so it's crossed like this, and then I stretch, and I'm gonna tuck it in the top just a little bit. That way, when the phlebotomy is done, I can grab the, the end piece like this and pop it up, and the whole thing just opens up for me. So snug, but not super tight. If they have a shirt on, feel free to put it over the shirt. With my gloves on, I'm gonna take my pointer finger and I'm going to roll it along the antecubital. With the tourniquet tied, I'm going to roll my pointer finger all the way back and forth. And I can feel, like I said, this guy only has one vein, right up the middle, nice and juicy. And I'm gonna pick where I wanna go into that vein. I'm gonna look at the direction and I'm gonna figure out where the juiciest part is and I want my needle to go just below that juicy part. Now, don't forget, the vein you see might not always be the best, best vein. So I've got, I know how it, it's formed, I know the direction it's going, I know where I'm gonna go in. So now I'm going to untie the tourniquet and I'm gonna get my alcohol wipe. Now we don't actually use the alcohol on the fake arms because it does deteriorate the rubber, so I'm just using it unwipe. And I'm going to do a nice circular um, scrubbing up and down, just gonna scrub. What I'm working on when we're scrubbing here is we're gonna scrub off those epithelial cells that are loose and get all the bacteria that's hanging out just right there on the arm. We are not sterilizing the arm, we are just cleaning the arm with the alcohol wipe. Then I'm gonna go ahead, while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put together my equipment. Most of the time, we want to use a 21 gauge green needle. This gives us the best quality specimen. However, on the fake arms, we're gonna use the black 23 gauge. It causes less damage to the arms and allows the arms to uh, work for us for longer periods of time. So now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna take my adapter. I'm gonna take off my little cap 
and I'm going to put my adapter and I'm gonna screw it on. Now, sometimes these may come all together and you can open up the whole kit together. Um, sometimes they don't, you put them together. It depends on your facility and what you pay for. So I know when I pull this back that my bevel will be up following my uh, safety guard, my safety shield. I'm gonna go ahead while that's finishing drying, after I get the needle put together, I'm gonna to get my gauze and my tubes and I'm gonna set them to the left of the patient. I'm gonna draw two tubes so you can see how I change the tubes. Don't start with the tube actually in the adapter while you're learning because it's just one more thing to juggle. So we have everything to the left-hand side. I am right-handed. Once I go in with my right hand, the right hand does not leave the, the holder. And so I need to be able to get the tubes with my left hand and switch those around. If you are left-handed, this will be opposite. I'm gonna ask the patient, is it dry? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to tie the tourniquet, again, snug, but not overly tight. So when we're getting ready to go in, we're gonna anchor the vein. And what that means is what we're going to do is take the vein and we're gonna pull it nice and tight down. By pulling it nice and tight down, we're keeping that vein from rolling. If we don't do this and they have a nice big vein, when we put the needle in, it's likely just to push that vein out of our way. So check the needle, everything's open, ready to go. I'm gonna anchor the vein, one, two, three, poke. I'm gonna go into the vein. Now, the second anchoring you do is you're gonna anchor your thumb, pushing it down against the skin. This way, if your patient moves, your arm moves with them. If they move around, you are keeping that needle in place by taking your thumb, pushing it against the adapter, against your fingers, against the arm. So you're anchoring the adapter into place. This way, when we go to add the tubes, we take the tubes and we put it on and you're gonna use the flange to produce counter pressure. Push it on, let it fill. You're going to use the finger against the flange and these two fingers to pull it out. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use the finger against the flange and I'm going to pull this out, mix it before I go in with my other two. You're gonna put the tube in, use the flanges to push it in. Once it's nice and full, you're gonna use the pointer finger against the flange to do that counter pressure. So now I come out, I give it two complete inversions. Now don't forget, remember how long it takes to get those complete inversions? pop the tourniquet. I set the gauze over the spot, but I do not push until the needle is all the way out or you're pushing that needle against the vein. So I set it over, I pull out, I push on the gauze and I activate my safety shield. Depending on where you're at, make sure you follow the instructions. Sometimes you can use your thumb to do it. Sometimes you use hard surfaces. So make sure you follow the rules where you're at based on the type of safety shield it is. Once we are done, I'm gonna have the patient hold the gauze and I'm gonna immediately get rid of the needle into my sharps container. I do not wanna be handling that. Even though it's closed, I wanna make sure it safely gets in the sharps container. My patient is holding the gauze. I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to make sure to do my five to eight complete inversions. One thing I want to note, do not bandage this patient until your tubes are labeled. The reason is once it's the patient's bandaged, they're gonna to wanna to get up and go. So now I got my labels. I'm gonna take, remember we talked about how to label these tubes before, last name on the top, and we wanna make sure the little line on both shows. So I'm gonna label them both. Then I'm gonna ask the patient, could you please spell your last name one more time? And I'm gonna be reading on my tubes to make sure I grab the right labels for this patient. It is correct. I'm going to go ahead and put these down. I'm gonna check the patient, make sure they're not bleeding still. One good way is to lift it up, look for count to the eight, count of one, two, three, four, five, make sure I see no more blood, looks great. Grab a clean piece of gauze. I'm gonna quarter the gauze and I'm gonna get a piece of tape, band-aid, depending on your, your patient's preference. I'm going to put it on and give it a nice tight pressure bandage. Before we release the patient, we wanna make sure to tell the patient, make sure you don't lift anything heavy with this arm for the next 10 minutes or so. That includes the purse. Those little old ladies with that big purse that go and lift it back up, that 20 pound purse is likely to pop that platelet plug. And we wanna make sure this patient does not pop that platelet plug or they could potentially bleed through the bandage and get all over their clothes. And we don't want that. So then once I get the bandage all on, thank you so much. Have a great day. And you can go ahead and let them get up, release them from the chair clean up all your garbage. 
put your tubes wherever you need to send your tubes to and you are good to go.